everyone, my name is Damien and welcome back to the channel and for another episode on the poor man's GTR. So for those that have been following from the start, we'll know that this car was once a wreck and now it looks like this. It's nice, it's Bayside Blue, but there's definitely quite a bit more work done uh, that needs to be done before we get to drive it. Uh, what happened in the previous episode? We painted the door jams, the engine bay, just all the inside body panels and in this episode, it's time to slap the whole car back together do a little bit more sanding and cleaning because prep work is very, very important. Sorry I sound a little bit rough today, but we'll get through it. Um, and then it's time to shoot some paint over the whole car. So this video I hope is full of information on how I go about things. Now, as I said in the previous episode, this is the second car I've ever painted. I really don't have much experience in terms of painting, but I would, you know, I'm happy to give out the information on how I did it. Again, there are many, many different techniques and ways of going about it, but this is just how I did it. So, hope it can help a few people. And I guess we'll get stuck into the episode. Alrighty, so this is where all the work begins in terms of working on the car in this episode to make progress and show you guys what's been happening and also behind the scenes in terms of the editing. The introduction and the conclusion are always filmed usually one or two nights before the videos actually go live because I hate talking to the camera, but I'm willing to learn. So here I'm just quickly unmasking the car and slowly starting to prepare the rest of the body panels to be bolted back onto the car. Now the reason we're doing this is, I'll explain it in a minute, but once the doors, the boot, the front fenders and the bonnet or hood are back onto the car, it's time to start applying the guide coat. Again, it's just a powdered graphite sort of thing. You apply it and you start blocking your back with some 320 grit dry sandpaper. What this will do is anywhere you see the black graphite, that means that's the low spot. If everything is nice and flat, you, that means you've done a good job and your panels are most likely going to be nice and straight, which is exactly what you want. Now you've already sanded all that graphite off and the primer is now super silky smooth. What you wanna do is you wanna reapply the graphite over the whole car and wet sand it. Now the reason for doing this is the 320 grit sand marks are way too deep and coarse for the paint to go over, which means you paint over those 320 grit sand marks and you will see them through. So you wanna finish off with about 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper and probably a maximum of 800 grit sandpaper. At least that's what I've been told. So reapply the guide coat, wet sand it with 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper in my case, and then it is time to do more cleaning. So the whole car is sanded back and it's very exciting because you can almost paint your car, but exact same as the last episode, I want to be repetitive about this process and that is cleaning. Make sure that all these body panels are nice and clean before you paint the car. So I'm just using a bit of soap and a cloth, clean cloth, make sure it doesn't have grease on it, um, and a pressure cleaner. Pressure cleaning all the door jams, the outside of the car, the bonnet, the boot, everything you want to make sure is nice and clean. Now some might be cringing, oh he's getting the interior wet, it's going to go moldy and stuff like that. Firstly, it's just getting a few little water drops in the interior and secondly, I am cooking outside, it's 35 degrees so don't worry about, about it not evaporating. Now I'm magically back, the car is clean and I've got a haircut. So it's time to give the car a quick little scotch bright with some grey scotch bright. What this will do is it won't generate dust, but it will make sure that the primer is now 100% clean and clean of any chemicals and water residue. So the water, even though it's drinkable and everything, it probably isn't like distilled water where it's 100% clean. Um, so yeah, now it's time to wax and grease remover or prep solve the whole car once or twice and slowly start masking. The masking process is probably gonna be 20 seconds worth of footage when in reality it was probably about six or seven hours worth of, you know, worth of work. In the previous episode, same thing. The masking probably took four or five hours. In total for the whole job, probably about 12 to 15 hours worth of masking. Obviously, if you're a professional and you do this on a daily basis, this will take you nowhere near as much time but for an amateur to make sure everything is nicely masked up, you literally want to mask up everything. The door jams you've painted, the engine bay you've painted. So this is kind of the annoying and time consuming work. The painting isn't that bad and you get it done quite quickly. Just one more thing I'd like to add. Literally, we masked up everything. So I'll show you. 
So the door jam was masked up. There was paper stuff between the door and the car. The bottom of the doors was masked up. So take your time, mask it up because masking it is easier than cleaning off the, the overspray. So what I'm doing right now is just spraying a little bit of super, super thinned out primer on the door and the rear quarter panel. As you can see, there are just a few little patches of like bare metal surface that you want covered with primer before you, you know, put any sort of paint over the top. Now I believe this technique is called wet on wet where you don't actually go back and sand the primer. You just work a little bit quicker and go over the top of it with your ground coat. Now in the painting world, I believe the white in my case would be considered the ground coat. In the previous video, I went over reasons why I chose a white ground coat as opposed to a silver or a, like a dark metallic or something like that. Um, and the blue would be considered the base coat, I believe. So yeah, one or two light little coats on those sections and you can begin spraying your, spraying your, your ground coat. Once again, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Hames Paint in O'Connor, which is my local spray shop for supplying all the painting supplies for the R34 Skyline. If you're in Western Australia, Perth, and you're looking at spraying your car, definitely pay them a visit. And again, we're using Protec, which is made by PPG. So to mix the base coats, it is a one-to-one -one ratio or 50% thinners and 50% color. Same goes for the white as for the blue. If you put one liter of color, you need one liter of thinners. There's no need for hardeners or anything like that. And yeah, the first coat won't cover very well, while the second coat, you're already going to see better coverage. Now all the GoPro footage does look, the color does look a little bit more like a baby blue while all the footage coming off the Sony looks a bit more realistic I guess. Again same as the previous episode a lot of people were saying that the color looks very dull and that's because of my color correction. It was a very very flat image and I kind of kept it flat when in reality the car is really really blue. So hopefully in this episode I'll do a bit of a better job on the color correction so you guys can see what it would actually look like in person. I'm a 
So the first coat of the Bayside Blue is down over the white ground coat and the car is slowly starting to take shape. Now I actually skipped filming the second coat because it was laid down the exact same as the first coat. So we'll go straight to the third coat. Now you can see I'm doing it a little bit differently compared to the first coat. Instead of doing one panel at a time, what I'm doing is I'm walking the whole car. Now the reason for doing this is it's not a solid color, it's actually a metallic. And if you kind of walk down the whole car at once, you're, you're gonna get like a nice and consistent finish. And that's really important when you're spraying metallic because the metallic will settle nice and evenly, which means your quarter panel won't be a different color to your door or your, you know, your rear quarter panel. So walking the distance kind of gives the whole car a nice even finish throughout. Even though in saying this, the roof, the boot, and the bonnet look like a zebra, but that's my mistake and I'll explain in the next video what I will do differently and why I stuff those panels up but all in all it turned out very nice. So in the previous episode I said I was going to talk about the Bayside Blue and the two different variants. I believe there are only two different variants so one being what I have the lighter Bayside Blue and two being the, um, the darker Bayside Blue. So the lighter one is found on the earlier model R34 GTRs, while the darker one is found on the later model R34 GTRs, such as the 2002 models, I believe, and the V-Spec 2 cars. Now, the color code, I believe, is still TV2, but we'll start with this one here. So this one here, very easy, straightforward. It's a metallic blue, you spray a few coats of the blue one, you put the clear over, and the job is done. While the uh, darker ones are sprayed differently. Instead of it being a two layer system, it is a three layer system. And that's where it kind of becomes tricky. It's not the time that it's going to take you to spray the car, it's actual skill that you need to be able to spray the car. So how those cars are sprayed is you have the blue base coat, which is nowhere near as blue as this color, but then you have a tinted clear known as the mid coat, I guess you could say. Um, which makes the color nice and rich, nice and blue. But that mid coat is almost like a candy. How many layers you put on, that's how dark it's going to be. Which means, if you're unskilled like myself and you go faster over the door as opposed to the rear quarter panel, that means that that door is going to be a lighter shade of blue compared to the rear quarter. 
So that's where things become a little bit trickier and you need more skill. And then obviously the third is just put the clear over the top. So remember, the blue that I have, Bayside blue, clear coat, done. The second variant is you got the blue that looks like crap, but then to make it look nice, you put that candy blue, let's just call it, and you put the clear coat over the top. Requires a lot more skill, two different finishes, pick your choice and preference. I won't make it easy for you now You got two minutes of my time And I don't really break too easy But I'm worth it Cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight Oh So give me, so give me your all I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind So we're at the end of another video and I hope you guys liked it. As you saw, the outside of the car was painted, but things like the bumpers and the side skirts I missed out on. So we're just gonna throw that footage in the next video. Talking about the next video, it's actually gonna be more of a vlog style. So me doing a little bit of talking on what went wrong, what I will do differently, uh, how much paint was used in the car, and how we almost lost the car. So the car almost came off the trailer because we were very, very smart to use two 300 kilo straps. Um, to strap the car down. Apparently that was going to hold it. It didn't hold it and the car almost came off. So very, very smart on our behalf. But 
it's here, it's in the workshop, it's safe, so we're all good. Um, so I asked for feedback in the previous episode and the comments were either very, very positive, which is great, but what I do prefer is constructive criticism because that's the only way that these videos are going to, you know, become better. You saying great videos is showing me to support, but I do prefer the people saying your audio is crap, your music is, you know, change it up a bit. There's a little bit of swearing going on in it. Um, people saying you need to be a little bit more natural on camera. That is easier said than done, that third one. Um, like talking to a camera is so, so weird. But at the end of the day, this is a build series where the layout of the videos right now, I'm quite happy with. I do want to include more information in the voiceovers, maybe stretch the footage out a little bit so we can include more details in every single video and really show you guys on how to build a car from start to finish, especially uh, like a wrecked one. Most people aren't going to start with a wrecked car. They'll just start with a car that needs a little bit of love. So I think this is definitely going to a next level showing you the whole build series throughout and I can't wait to finish it and drive it which the goal is to actually drive the car in March so that's two and a half months don't know how I'm gonna do it financially uh, but we're gonna find a way to do it if anyone wants to rob a bank with me just let me know I'm down um, but yeah anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video and any feedback on how to make these videos better comment below Follow the Instagrams for live updates and yeah, that'll be it. Thanks for watching.